Communications group MTN says it doesn't owe any taxes to the Ghanaian government, despite being hit with a charge of $773 million. The firm's CEO spoke to a Rise business correspondent, Rota Sadiri, at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. He, he began by asking if the telecommunications sector is recession-proof. The discussion here at Davos around recessions uh, is that actually for developed markets, um, maybe uh, the prospects for 2023 were better than we thought of you know, maybe uh, two or three months ago. It looks like in some countries it will be either very shallow recessions or actually recessions will be avoided completely. However, in the markets we operate in, Africa, I think it will be a bit more challenging. Uh, you, know, it, you know, there's still going to be uh, some socio-economic and uh, challenges coming out of the crises that we've come out of, you know, COVID, firstly the pandemic, then we had the war uh, in uh, Ukraine, and you have, uh, you know, heightened inflation in many markets. So I think we're going to find that in the markets we operate as MTN, things will be too challenging. Having said that, I think the telecommunications sector uh, should uh, have a lot more resilience. Um, the services that we offer, these are in demand. Uh, you know, people need to get connected. One out of two Africans still doesn't have a smartphone. So the job to connect people, I think, is going to be, uh, you know, continuing to accelerate. So it's not that we are recession-proof. I think we will have, uh, in general, a much um, more um, uh, resilient performance uh, in a micro, uh, macro that is still going to be challenging uh, across the African markets. What is going on with governments around the world that are strapped for cash trying to hit MTN up for money? I'm talking about the Ghanaian government that we all know has a revenue and debt problem coming out of nowhere with a $773 million back tax bill for MTN Ghana. What is your stance on that? Are you responding to them? Look, I think we must separate the issues. There's, there's two issues, and I think I touched it on the first question really around that, um, you know, given the poly crisis that we're facing globally, uh, our African markets are going to get hit, uh, you know, and the pain will be felt more severely in Africa than anywhere else, I would argue. So, I mean, you're talking about Ghana, but I think it's not just Ghana, it's many markets. Egypt is facing the challenges, Ethiopia, Zambia, uh, Ghana, and the list could go on. So, I think we must first recognize that there is a big uh, issue where um, the African continent has to think about how does it get out of this challenge. And I would argue that the Africans must figure it out for themselves, business, government, and broader society. So Ghana is caught up in all of this, uh, uh, as many other countries are. I think the second question is you raising really is about MTN, uh, and with respect to the, uh, you know, the tax assessment that we've, um, we, you know, that's been raised. Um, you know, we've noted in our communication, uh, which we released last Friday, uh, as well as an investor call we had on this this Monday past, is that um, you know, firstly. Um, you know, for us, taxes due had been paid, and we stand by that uh, position. Um, you know, we are going to constructively engage the authorities in Ghana on this, and we are seeking, uh, you know, we hope that we can find a, a, a resolution to the matter. But we are quite resolute that uh, we believe taxes due were paid. We're holding no provision, no contingent liability. That's how strongly we feel. We, we, there's an independent report, and the reports that would stand uh, and uh, substantiate our position. But it's an ongoing matter, but we look forward to constructively engaging with the authorities in Ghana uh, over the next two to three weeks. The internet service provider space is really heating up, and I want to get your thoughts on Elon Musk's Starlink that is making inroads in Nigeria. Are you nervous? How are you responding to that? No, we're not nervous, says MTN, MTN Group or MTN Nigeria. I mean, we think that over the medium to long term, you are going to have connectivity anchored uh, by three forms of technology. Um, subsea cables that I think that will give us the connectivity across markets and continents. You're going to continue to see investments there. Terrestrial networks like ours, wireless carriers, as well as fixed networks uh, on the ground. I think you're going to see investment. And you're going to continue to see investments in low Earth uh, orbit satellites such as Starlink. There are others, um, um, OneWeb. Uh, and others that I think you're going to find uh, continuously coming. So the way we see it is that this is a complementary technology. You know, five to ten years out, wherever we are in the world, we're always going to be online. You're never going to be, uh, you know, going out, um, you know, deep into Kad Kaduna State uh, in Nigeria and say, I've got no connectivity. Because if your terrestrial network is not working, your, you, your device will automatically attach to satellite. 
that world is coming. So the way we see this is that it's complementary. The average African you know, cannot uh, afford the price points that Starlink is offering at the moment. We understand the technology will improve and the cost curves will come down. But uh, you know, from our position that you know, optical fiber uh, you know, transmission is, is going to be superior to satellite for a long time. Um, but what satellite has is that it can get to the deep rural areas um, and where the network is shut down because of power shortages, you know, you will have power, uh, you know, in space. So I think that the, the key thing is uh, it's going to be a complementary technology and you're going to see us, you know, terrestrial networks such as ours partnering, uh, you know, with uh, space operators over time. We understand that MTN is working with a company that, hand, that helps uh, people with disabilities in South Africa called Convo. Can you tell us more about the pilot project that the two of you are working on? No, look, we're always looking at uh, figuring out through technology how do we enable and give people better lives. Um, and, um, you know, disabled people, you know, have constraints that limit their ability to live as full a life as others, uh, you know, m um, abled people would. So what we are looking at there is to, to figure out, you know, how do we use the technology to uh, basically improve uh, uh, their lives and create opportunities for themselves to build their own businesses. That's where we are focusing our technology. But I think you'll hear more of that uh, over time. It's something that we're pretty excited about. Uh, finally, I just want to get your outlook, I guess, on the telecommunications sector in 2023. How do you see things uh, playing out, I guess, you know, globally, Africa in total? Yeah, I remain pretty excited about, uh, you know, the, um, the telecommunications sector. There is still, particularly in Africa, a massive job to do to drive uh, digital inclusion. As I said, basically one out of two Africans doesn't have a smartphone. And um, as long as they don't have a smartphone, they don't have access to the internet and the benefits of the internet. So we, um, you know, are pretty bullish about, uh, you know, the sector going into 2023. We understand that the macro will be very challenging uh, for many of our consumers and the markets that we operate in. But we can bring, um, you know, two nation states uh, the digital infrastructure that can help Africa leapfrog some of the challenges. We're going to be putting $2 billion of CapEx into our networks across the various markets we're operating. We're sustaining our level of CapEx because we really believe in the opportunity. One third of that will be going to Nigeria specifically. I mean, we're very excited about Nigeria and the growth prospects there. Mobile money are growing off our, our communications business. So uh, we remain uh, you know, bullish about the telco sector and that we should be able to see you know, very good growth and uh, new customers coming on to our networks for the very first time. We remain excited.